The 1983 film, The Day After, shocked American audiences with its realistic portrayal of nuclear war's aftermath, showcasing societal collapse, radiation effects, and the silence of a changed world. It marked a shift in the discussion from political issues to personal survival. Despite airing over 40 years ago, its themes remain relevant as global tensions rise and nuclear conflict threats loom. Though it may seem unlikely, a nuclear attack could happen without warning. Nevertheless, survival, especially in the first 48 hours, is possible with proper preparation and quick action. In this video, we will outline strategies for surviving a nuclear attack during those critical initial hours. Understanding the Initial Blast and Fallout Timeline When a nuclear weapon detonates, its initial effects are sudden and catastrophic. A blinding flash of light, a thunderous blast wave, and a searing thermal pulse all happen within seconds. These immediate effects can kill or seriously injure anyone within a few kilometers of ground zero. But for those just outside the immediate danger zone, the minutes that follow can mean the difference between life and death. The key lies in understanding the threat of fallout. Unlike the initial blast, radioactive fallout takes time to arrive. After a surface-level detonation, the explosion pulls dust and debris high into the atmosphere. These particles become radioactive and start to fall back to Earth. This is fallout, and it typically begins to settle within 10 to 15 minutes after detonation. This short window of time is critical. If you survive the initial explosion, you likely have at least 10 minutes, sometimes more, before fallout begins to contaminate your surroundings. That means seeking immediate shelter is the most important first step. Cars are not suitable protection. Instead, the goal is to put as much dense material between yourself and the radioactive particles as possible. Concrete, brick, and earth are your best friends. The deeper you are inside a structure or below ground, the more protection you have from the radiation. A basement, underground parking garage, or even a subway station offers far better shielding than being outside or in a vehicle. The fallout that arrives after detonation is most dangerous in the first hour and continues to pose a serious risk for the next 24 hours. During this time, exposure can lead to acute radiation sickness, organ failure, and death. Radiation levels drop off exponentially, with some estimates showing a 50% reduction in intensity every seven hours. That's why the first 24 to 48 hours are so vital to your survival. If you can remain shielded during this window, your chances of avoiding life-threatening radiation exposure increase dramatically. It's also important to understand the difference between types of nuclear events. A nuclear detonation, like one from a bomb, produces far more intense fallout than a nuclear power plant accident or the transportation mishap of radioactive materials. The principles of protection remain the same, time, distance, and shielding, but the urgency and intensity are vastly greater during an actual detonation. Knowing what's happening and responding accordingly can save your life. Where to shelter and how to improve protection the ideal shelter during a nuclear event is not a high-tech bunker, but a deep, solid, enclosed space with as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Think concrete apartment buildings, basements, underground subways, or the interior hallways of large public buildings. You're looking for dense material to block gamma radiation, the deadliest form released in fallout. The goal is to reduce your exposure while fallout is most active. Even inside a shelter, your exact location matters. The center of the building, or the deepest level underground, provides the greatest shielding. Stay away from windows, doors, and exterior walls. Once inside, seal the space. Turn off fans, air conditioners, or heating systems that pull air in from outside. Close vents, windows, and fireplace dampers to reduce radioactive particles from entering. If you were outside during the blast, Carefully remove your outer layer of clothing, ideally placing it in a sealed bag or trash container away from people and pets. 
Doing this can remove up to 90% of radioactive material. Then wash any exposed skin and hair with soap and lukewarm water. If water isn't available, use a damp cloth or wipe. Never use hand sanitizer or household cleaning wipes on skin as these do not remove radioactive particles and may cause irritation. Within your shelter, stay informed if possible. A battery-powered or hand-crank AM-FM radio is one of the most reliable ways to receive updates, even when cell towers and internet services fail. Local officials may provide critical guidance about when it's safe to leave, where fallout has settled, and where emergency services are operating. While most FM and TV stations may be down, distant AM stations often remain functional. Keep your radio tuned and conserve battery life. Pets and service animals should be brought inside and treated the same as humans. If they were exposed, gently brush their fur to remove radioactive dust and wash them with soap and water when possible. Their food and water should be from sealed indoor sources. Never feed pets food that was outside and unsealed at the time of detonation. Radiation affects animals in similar ways to humans, and their safety also ensures your own. Essential supplies for the first 48 hours. Preparation doesn't require military-grade gear, but it does require planning. If you're lucky enough to shelter in place, the supplies you have on hand will shape your survival experience. The most basic need is water. Aim for at least two liters per person per day for drinking, and ideally more for hygiene and decontamination. Long-life foods that require little to no preparation, canned goods, energy bars, dried fruits, are the safest bet. All food should be sealed and stored indoors. Unsealed items exposed to fallout may be contaminated and unsafe to eat. Personal hygiene items are also crucial. Soap, towels, sanitary wipes, trash bags, and sealed clothing can help maintain a clean environment and prevent radioactive spread. Bring a change of clothing for each person in case decontamination is needed. Clothes worn outside should be sealed and kept far from your living area. If anyone inside begins to show signs of radiation sickness, nausea, vomiting, weakness, or skin burns, it's vital to minimize their movement and seek medical help when it becomes safe to do so. Medicines are often overlooked in emergency kits. If you rely on daily medications, having a backup supply could be life-saving. Include basic first aid materials, bandages, antiseptics, and burn ointments, and if possible, potassium iodide KI tablets. KI helps protect the thyroid gland from radioactive iodine if taken shortly before or after exposure. However, it's only effective against certain isotopes and should only be used under official recommendation. Other essential items include flashlights, extra batteries, a manual can opener, and a printed emergency contact list. Cash is helpful in case ATMs and digital payment systems are down. If you have children, include comfort items like books, toys, or stuffed animals to reduce stress. The psychological toll of a nuclear event is immense, and keeping a sense of routine, however small, can help everyone cope while waiting for official guidance. Staying put versus evacuating. One of the most dangerous mistakes people make after a nuclear detonation is attempting to evacuate too soon. Fallout is most lethal in the first few hours. Unless your shelter is compromised by fire, structural damage, or another immediate threat, you should remain inside for at least 24 hours. The longer you can stay sheltered, the better. Radiation levels drop exponentially over time. After 24 hours, outdoor radiation may still be dangerous, but not as immediately lethal. If no official guidance has been issued after the first day, remain inside unless a medical emergency or structural hazard forces you out. Evacuation should only occur when instructed by emergency personnel. Authorities will identify safe zones, fallout plumes, and recommended routes. Self-evacuating before this information is available can expose you to high radiation, especially if you're walking or stuck in a vehicle. Cars provide little protection and roads may be blocked with debris, 
panic drivers or law enforcement checkpoints. If evacuation is necessary, pack deliberately and quickly. Bring water, food, extra clothes, medications, and identification. If you have pets, bring their food, medications, and a crate or carrier. Wear a mask or cloth over your nose and mouth to limit inhalation of radioactive particles. Cover your skin with as much clothing as possible and consider adding a disposable outer layer that can be removed once you reach a safer area. Avoid touching contaminated surfaces and once at your destination, decontaminate yourself and your belongings. In areas where guidance is delayed, self-organization may become necessary. Consider forming small groups within your shelter to assign roles, monitoring the radio, rationing supplies, or caring for children and the elderly. If someone has medical training, designate a safe room for first aid. Sharing resources and information can help reduce stress and improve outcomes. Keep signage and notes visible if you need to direct others to shelter or warn about hazards. In a prolonged emergency, your community may become your lifeline. Caring for the vulnerable and managing long-term survival. In the wake of a nuclear detonation, care for vulnerable populations becomes a top priority. Children, pregnant women, the elderly, and individuals with disabilities are more sensitive to radiation and stress. They should be sheltered in the most protected parts of your building, interior rooms with no windows, or ideally, the basement. Limit their exposure to any contaminated materials and ensure they receive adequate hydration and food. Monitor them closely for signs of illness or anxiety and provide reassurance when possible. Structure and routine, even simple activities like reading or drawing, can offer stability. Communication may be limited or completely offline. Designate someone in your group to monitor available radio stations for updates. If your phone still functions, use it sparingly to preserve battery. Only text or call when necessary. If someone needs help and cannot wait, create a clear signal system, flags, signs, or markings visible from windows that indicate medical emergencies. Keep in mind that emergency services may take hours or even days to respond. After 48 hours, if no evacuation order has been given, and the situation inside your shelter is stable. Begin preparing for extended sheltering. Inventory remaining supplies, ration accordingly, and establish sanitation practices. If a toilet is not available, designate a safe waste disposal system using sealed containers or trash bags. Keep hygiene items separate from contaminated materials and avoid touching your face after handling anything from outside. Hand washing before meals is essential. Longer term survival may require resourcefulness. If your shelter has access to stored rainwater or a clean water source, continue to test its safety using any available indicators. Foraging or leaving the shelter should still be avoided unless directed by authorities. Crops, gardens, and water sources outside may remain contaminated for weeks. Wait for all clear instructions from officials before consuming any items grown or stored outdoors. Continue to monitor radio broadcasts for information about recovery centers, aid distribution, or medical assistance. The goal is to outlast the danger, not outrun it. Now it's time to hear from you. What's one survival tip or piece of information you think more people need to know about nuclear preparedness? Let us know in the comments below.